Welcome back to our series on the seven deadly sins. Today, we're going to go over the topic of gluttony. Now, if you're like me, you probably just saw gluttony as eating too much, and you wouldn't be wrong. But I found as I studied this topic, it was one of the topics I knew the least about as far as church history is concerned, because many saw it as more than just overeating. Several Christian theologians have written lists of how gluttony affects us and what they are. But think of gluttony as lust of the stomach. But it comes through the eyes in the way of desire. And when we give into it, it can often rule our lives in many different ways. Aquinas points out that gluttony can be a sin that is not only an overindulgence of food, but a desire for food that perhaps is too costly or is too a qualitative, too daintily prepared, that our desire becomes for excessive, either costly food or rare food to where we're not using food in the nature that it's given, which is just for sustenance and to get by, but rather purely for enjoyment. I found many theologians pointed out that even eating food at the wrong time or too hastily or with too much enjoyment was kind of frowned upon and seen as not having one's desires in check. And as I thought about this more, I had to say, yeah, it is true that when these desires aren't in check, that gluttony often rules our lives, right? The desire for food, what we eat, when we eat it, all these things uh, affect us more than we realize. Our emotions, uh, you know, the term hangry, right? That I can't keep my emotions in check because I'm hungry. And uh, this is a very common thing in today's world. So, wow, how, you know, how do we really put this into check? The answer given to this was fasting. Fasting is a way to put not only the desire for food into check, but the worldly and physical passions. And as we fast, we say no to the flesh and we focus on the things of the spirit.